Now let's talk about entering our first trades into Edgewonk. As I mentioned in the previous video, you can choose between entering your trade manually or bulk importing your trades. Most of our users will import their trades. By clicking here, this menu will come up. In the first step, you simply choose the platform or the broker that you're trading with from the selection here. Then you have to choose the setup. We will come back to the setup in a moment. And then you drop your trading file here. If you don't know how to get the correct trading file and the trading data for your platform, simply click here on the blue link. This will take you to our FAQ where we explain how to get the correct statement. But let's assume you enter your trade manually. So we click here, this will come up. At first you enter the regular trade data such as the entry type, the instrument and the setup. By default, there are no instruments and setups in your trading journal, but you can very easily create them. Clicking on instrument, you can see there's nothing here but let's add something here first. We can add any ticker or any symbol, any name here. Then we want to enter the setup. The setup can also be the strategy name for that trade. Again, there's only the default setup here at the beginning of your trading journal, but you can enter any name here. By clicking the item then now here, it will be saved in your trading journal. Then you choose the direction. Was it a buy or sell? In Edgewonk, this stands for long or short. And then you can enter the entry price, of course, when you're importing your trades, all of this will be done automatically. We enter the quantity, and by that point, we can already save the trade. You will see this trade has a white background, which means that's an open trade. We can bring it back up. You can see everything is here. When we are closing the trade, we just enter the exit date here. Let's assume we are exiting it one day later. We can enter our exit price. And if you're trading stocks or futures, the profit will be calculated automatically. You simply can add the fees. And then you can see also the net PL updates. Now we can save the trade and you will see it has a green background, which means it's a winning trade. So whether you are adding your trades manually or importing them automatically, we would always recommend to add a stop loss or a take profit if this is a part of your trading approach. The stop loss and the take profit, once you have entered them, will unlock a lot of features in Edgewonk that are related to the reward to risk ratio and the R multiple, which you can then use across the journal. If you're importing your trades, we would recommend going to settings first and then go to setups. And here you can add new setups directly to your Edgewonk trading journal. You just click on setup and then we'll be added to the list. By the way, you can reorder the entries here and this will also change the order in the filters and also when you're entering the trade. You can even write a short description for your setups here for later use. Going back to the journal, one thing that is really helpful is that you can simply click into the cell of the setup and then this will bring up this menu here with all available setups that you have created. And we can very easily change this on the fly. So if you're bulk importing many trades at once, you can then easily come back to your journal and change the setups here. When we scroll a little bit to the right, you can see that we have already quite a few data points. We have a reward to risk ratio and our multiple, but there's a lot more that can be done here. In the beginning, however, it's very easy to feel overwhelmed when entering your trades in Edgewonk and we would really recommend to only focus on the most important data points. The most important data points are really the stop loss and the take profit. And it's very important here that those are the initial values, the initial stop loss, the initial take profit when you're entering your trades. Very often what we've seen is that the trading platforms, when you're moving your stop loss or take profit order around during a trade, the trading platforms will not provide the initial stop loss and take profit. So you might have to come back and change the values here to get the correct data. If you're a trader who is scaling in and out of your trades, you can also record that in Edgewonk. For that, you simply click on the plus icon here, either besides the entry or the exit price. And this will bring up this other pop-up, which is called scale in and scale out. Here, you see all of the entries and the exits for that trade. As you can see, we have only one entry and we have only one exit. But if you want to add another entry, you can do that here. Assuming we have taken a second entry a little bit later, we can record that here and we also note the quantity. As you can see, we have now an open quantity of 50. So if we want to close that trade, the trade becomes white again because we have open quantity and the trade is not fully closed. So what we do here is we go back to the price and then under exit, we have to record another exit price. So assuming the second exit was a little bit later and for the full quantity, we record that here. And now you can see we have zero as an open quantity and Edgewonk will calculate the average entry price. So you can see we have two entries with the same quantity and that's why you get this exit price. The same is true for the entry price. It's an average of the two entries here. We save it 
You can see the gross PL is calculated automatically again because we have a stock trading journal. We click on save and you can see it's green again. The trade is fully closed and it's a winning trade. When you're importing your trades, Edgewonk will also recognize when you have trades with multiple entries and exits. And that means sometimes the trade amount in your broker and Edgewonk will differ slightly because your broker might list all of the trades individually, but Edgewonk recognizes when the trades belong together and Edgewonk will cluster those trades with additional entries and exits. One very easy thing to do, but it unlocks a lot of features in Edgewonk as we will see, is we can go to the advanced trade data and then go to the entry, exit and trade management comments. We will spend a little bit more time on this in a later video, but basically what you do here is that you can describe how well you have entered the trade and whether you have respected your entry rules or whether you have broken them. Same is true for your exit comments and the trade management. So you can very nicely rate your exit, your entry and your trade management. You can assign positive or negative values. So let's assume we have an entry here and everything went according to the plan. We can type that in according to the plan. You can see it already comes up here. And then you can see this traffic light here because according to the plan describes good and positive behavior, we give this a positive rating. And once we click here on save, you will see something has changed. The tilt meter is now coming up and the tilt meter is giving you a green rating. This means that you have respected your rules. If the tilt meter would be red, it would indicate that you have broken your trading rules on this trade. But we'll come back to this in a later video because it's an essential part and it's a great way to get started with Edgewonk with your first challenge. So by now you've entered your first trades and if you've imported your trades, you will have a bunch here already. Again, we would recommend to go through your imported trades, make sure they all have the correct stop loss and take profit value attached to them because it unlocks a lot of other functionalities. And it really pays off to spend a few extra minutes making sure that you have all the important data points. Of course, there's so much more here that we will explore later, but in the beginning, it really pays off that you enter your trades correctly and give them the correct entry points and the correct data points. You will see that this really pays off later when we dig into the trading journal functions. The last thing I want to show you here is merging and duplicating your trades. So as the name suggests, when you tick this box here, you can duplicate a trade. You will ask if you really want to duplicate the trade and you can see now we have two identical trades. You can also merge trades. So let's first duplicate one more. Now we have three same trades and now let's merge them. We want to merge two trades. When you select the trades, you want to make sure they have the same instrument, the same setup and the same direction. Only then will you be able to merge trades. So we click this. You will be asked if you really want to do this. We confirm it. And now you can see we have two trades. Let's open the first one. And what you will see is that under the scaling option, you now have all of the entries and all of the exits of the two trades that we just merged together. So because each trade had two entries and two exits, now you can see this trade has four entries and four exits. And that's how you can merge the trades. Of course, you can also delete a trade. So if you made a mistake or you've done something by accident, you can easily delete that. It is not possible to undo a delete or undo a merge. So make sure that you really pay attention when you're doing this. Finally, here on the right side, we have this column menu. We can open it up and then you can see those are all the available columns in your Edgewong trading journal. You can hide and unhide specific ones. You can also drag them around and that's how you can customize your journaling experience. If you want to reset to the default view, click on this icon and this brings back the default view.